then there are a couple of realizations that are very important. And those are that, you know, we have to understand what, what time in history we live in. If I was giving this talk 50 years ago, maybe my content would have been different. You know, based on the reality around us. And even though I'm not going to give you a comprehensive kind of social analysis of where Muslims stand, I do want to share some things with you. We are living in a time where there are so many different efforts, and there are so many different movements, and there are so many different labels, all under this big thing we call Islam. There are so many flavors of Islam. There are so many variations within Islam. To give you a personal example, I was, uh, I, my adult life began in, in New York City, and I, sp I spent most of my adult life actually in New York City. I only left New York about five years ago. And I was exposed to Islam on a serious, at a serious level in New York. And depending on which masjid you go to, you'll get a different brand of Islam, completely different from the other. And you get exposed to very different ways of thinking about Islam. I'm not here to label groups or ideologies. And I'm, I'm not talking about like outside of the mainstream fold. I'm talking about Sunni Islam, mainstream Islam. Within that, you have a lot of variety. You have a lot of variations. And as a young person, I was like a teen, you're very impressionable. So you ex get exposed to one and you're like, this must be the right one. Then you get exposed to the other and you say, well, maybe, that, maybe there's something wrong with that one. This must be the right one. And you keep kind of ex experimenting. It's this experimental experience in, 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 that, that I at least had in my early, earlier uh, youth, right? But at the end of it all, one thing became obvious. One thing became very clear to me. Islam and the struggle for Islam is not one thing. And it will never be owned by one group. It can't be. That time is over. That was the time of the Prophet wasallam. Islam was one thing. It was one people. They had exactly the same understanding on every issue. And they represented Islam. And, and if there was a difference of opinion, they could take it back directly to the Prophet wasallam, and he could answer them for, it, for them immediately in the flesh. We have the Qur'an and we have the Sunnah, yes. But have there been differences of interpretation of the Qur'an and the Sunnah? Yes. Are there going to be intellectual, legitimate differences of opinion among us? Yes. Are there going to be different varieties of Muslims? Absolutely. Now there's two attitudes we can take. One of the attitudes is, the one that I'm holding on to is correct, and everybody else, not only are they wrong, they are deviant, corrupt, heading into the hellfire, stay away from them if you know what's good for you, etc, etc, etc. That's one attitude. And I've seen that attitude. I'm from New York after all. I've seen that attitude. Don't go there, they'll send you to hell. Don't listen to them, their Islam is corrupt. And the other, we have the right Islam. And the other one the same way. Everybody's proprietary holding on to their variation of Islam as the right one. Everybody else says, I don't know what they're doing. But actually at the end of the day, the more you mature in your knowledge of Islam, you realize that the struggle for Islam, the work for Islam, is not going to be owned by one group, one community, one individual, one school of thought, it's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. That's not practically possible. And if, you know, it recently, alhamdulillah, I had a chance to go to Hajj, as I mentioned before, you realize how much diversity there is in Islam when you're at Hajj. How, how widely different Muslims can be. You realize that if not any place, then Hajj. 